Well, now that you have your Flex 5000, 3000, 1500, or whichever one you were able to purchase, or even the 1000, it's now time to have your training session. We need to learn how to set up the virtual audio cable 4.0, 0x, with power SDR. And I'm going to show you step by step just how to do that. And you know, when we set up the Flex 5000 to work with the virtual audio cable, guess what we don't need? We don't need one of these. This is a Rig Expert Plus. I used to need it when I had an ICOM 756 Pro, but guess what? No more. We don't need it any longer. So let's get to it. Let's learn how to set up our Flex 5000 with a virtual audio cable so we can go on the digital modes without the Rig Expert or the Rig Blaster or any one of those interfaces. To install VAC 4.09 you first must get the program. Well I simply googled the name VAC 4.09, hit search, and went to uh, the Flex site and as you can see I have a fairly complete description and then I went and looked to find the actual program. I clicked on the link free trial package and I hit a place to download it and then I can just open the software. The first thing we do is open the virtual audio cable control panel. By default only one audio cable is defined. You will need to create two cables by changing the drive parameters to two cables and then click set and, and restart. So we click set and then we click restart. In the MS per INT box, enter a value between 1 and 20 milliseconds. The lower the value, the smaller the VAC audio buffer. In the example set above, 7 milliseconds was selected. Depending on your computer setup, you may have to adjust this value to prevent the audio from dropping out or popping. You can choose between two different stream limit formats, cable format and cable range. We select cable format because Power SDR defines both audio cables formats when VAC support is enabled. Using the cable format is recommended. If you decide to use the cable range stream format, one thing to consider when a format conversion occurs, it takes significant CPU resources and it may noticeably slow your applications, causing audio dropouts. Therefore, using cable format as the stream format may help with audio dropouts. If you use cable range, make sure the computer you have can handle it. After completing all the necessary changes, click set for each cable when completed. Next we go to Power SDR and we click on the Audio tab and then we click on the VAC tab. In the Virtual Audio Cable Select Setup section, set the driver to MME using the drop-down box. Other driver options such as Windows WDMKS are supported but may work depending on the sound card and the applications being used. But we are going to stick with MME. Once you have VAC working, you can experiment with other drivers. Their advantage is that they have less inherent latency for audio transfer. However, at this time we're using MME because it is the most compatible. In the Auto Enable section, select this option if you want VAC to automatically engage when any of the digital modes, such as DigiX, DRM, are selected in the Power SDR console. This is the preferred setting. In the Input drop-down box, select the Virtual Audio Cable, among the other selections. In the Output box, select Line 2 Virtual Audio Cable. In the buffer section, select the buffer size from the drop down box. Depending on your computer setup, you may have to adjust this value to prevent the audio from dropping out or popping. In the sample rate section, select a higher sampling rate from the drop down box option that exceeds the sampling rate of the sound card program you are using. 
using a sampling rate of 48K provides the best audio quality and causes the fewest dropouts. As a troubleshooting note, in some cases the sound card program cannot handle format drop-down conversion very well, resulting in no or poor audio processing. If this is the case, change the sample rate to exactly match that of the sound card program you are using. If the sound card program uses a stereo mode such as Dream, then select the stereo option in the mono stereo selection. And finally, the gain dB section is the place where you adjust the AF gain of the VAC cable. Since the volume control was not checked on the VAC control panel, the Windows mixer is not available for VAC cables. Use only the adjustments in power SDR to increase or decrease the volume AF gain going to and from the sound card application. It is recommended to always start the power SDR with VAC enabled before you start the sound card program so that power SDR can define the VAC cable format. I have done it the wrong way and it has worked, but best to follow the recommendation. To check to see if the VAC is working properly, select the digital mode in power SDR, make sure the radio is on and not in standby mode. Then open the VAC control panel and you should see the cables active. As displayed, the VAC channels are active, but only for power SDR. If you look at cable 1, you will see that the number of PB streams is 0, and the RC streams for cable 2 also 0. VAC 4.0x automatically sets up both ends of the audio cable, even if the client sound program is not configured or even running. When setting up VAC for two audio programs, the audio output of one program uses the same audio cable as the input of the other. Conversely, the audio output of the first program uses the same audio cable as the output of the other. In this case, we are using MixW, and we have set the device to computer sound card. We've set the input to line 2, virtual audio, and we've set the output to line 1, also virtual audio. And as you can see, we do have it working. We can see AC4BB calling CQ and looking for a response. The PB stream value for VAC audio cable 1 is still 0. This will not change to a 1 until you are transmitting using the sound card program that makes W is sending audio through that cable. And at this point you're all done. Get on the air, call CQ, answer a CQ. Well I hope you're able to follow along with setting up the virtual audio cable. You know, one of the pluses of the Flex Software Defined Radios that you can't find in another radio, if you go out and buy an ICOM typical radio or Yezu or Kenwood, whatever radio you buy, that's it. For the next 20 years, that radio is not going to change. No more features will come flying out of the sky and be loaded into it. But if you have a Flex, no matter which one it is, more features come along every day. And so you get new and updated features as the software moves on. Even if there's a change in Windows platforms, you can be upgraded. Try and do that with an ICOM 756 or any, any of those hardware type radios. So, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you.